When you choose to daily drive a used car which is more than 20 years old, you've pretty much accepted the fact that there's going to be a few modern necessities you're going to have to do without. And more often than not, the problem exists right here with the stereo. If you're lucky, your car might have a CD player, but when was the last time you ever purchased or burnt one of these? Or even worse, your only external source of music might have to come from one of these, the cassette tape. Yeah. But the biggest issue here doesn't really relate to the media that you're using. The main issue is of course a complete lack of Bluetooth audio streaming. The ability to stream your favourite tracks from sources like Spotify or YouTube is an absolute godsend in today's modern world. And to drive a vehicle without this ability is like stepping back into the stone ages. Mm. Now of course it is extremely easy to upgrade your car's head unit. You just have to pop down to your local automotive parts store and pick up any number of head units which they have available. But to me the biggest issue with these head units is they look utterly shit in any car built before the mid 1990s. So if you wanted to keep your car's existing head unit, you probably think your next step would be to buy one of those FM transmitters which plug into the cigarette lighter. Or perhaps even worse, one of these cassette tape adapters which leaves you with an auxiliary wire hanging out of your car's head unit, like a tapeworm out of a dog's ass. But the problem with both of these options is they rely on dated technologies to get your music into the head unit of the car. The audio quality suffers as a result and you'll never truly be happy. But what if I told you there's another option? After one relatively simple and cheap mod, that you could stream audio directly from your iPhone or Android device into your car's head unit. Let me show you how. Okay, here we are with the head unit from my 1993 Ford Fairlane. It was manufactured by Alpine and was available as a premium sound head unit back in the day. It has a cassette tape slot, but also a six stacker CD player in the boot. So I think it'd be a real shame to have to throw this in the bin just so we can get Bluetooth audio streaming, which is how the inspiration for this mod came about. So how does it work? Well, let's get this thing open and take a look. Now on the top here, you'll see that we have the cassette tape module. When this is in operation, it reads the left and right audio data off the tape and then sends it down to the main board of the head unit, where it is then amplified and sent out to the speakers in your car. The idea of this mod is that we're going to hijack those audio channels and then splice in a new audio signal of our own. And we're going to do it with one of these. This is a universal Bluetooth to auxiliary audio receiver, which can be had for around 25 Australian dollars on eBay. You'll probably find a few different options available online. And so long as the model you're looking at is a Bluetooth receiver, outputs via a standard 3.5 millimeter auxiliary plug, and has positive and negative wires so you can hardwire it into your car, it'll work absolutely fine. Once installed, you'll be able to pair this thing to your smartphone and then stream audio to it directly from the app of your choice. If we cut the end off the 3.5 millimeter plug, you'll see that we have three different colored wires. And the thing to remember here is that the white is your left audio channel, red is the right audio channel, and black is the ground. The ultimate goal of this mod is to essentially find on the tape drive where the left, right and ground circuits are and then splice these wires onto it. Finally, we'll also have to tap into a power source and the job will be done. Now before we begin, I just want to say that I am not an expert when it comes to electrical work or best practices for modifying electrical circuits, but even someone like me can easily do this mod with a few simple tools. You'll need perhaps a couple of small screwdrivers to get into the unit itself. It's handy to have a small set of pliers just in case. You're going to need a soldering iron to join the wiring. Also some heat shrink tube to ensure everything is well insulated. And perhaps some tweezers just in case you need to get access to some really tightly packed wiring. So as I mentioned earlier, this mod revolves around hijacking the tape drive's audio channels. So we're going to need to pull it out. This one is held in with four small screws. All right, here we go. So we'll set the head unit aside for now. Now, if we have a look at this tape drive, you don't really need to understand how it all works. So don't be too daunted by how it looks. 
but you need to trace back the channels uh, and the easiest way to do that is to find out where it connects to the main board of the head unit. So this one does it via this 17 pin connection. If we follow these circuits up the board, you'll notice only half of them roughly connect to this board on the top, which is connected to the tape drive itself. So instead of 17 possibilities, you're looking at roughly seven instead. In order to find out which circuits are the right ones to use, you can do a couple of things. You can go onto Google and type in some of these codes which you find on the unit itself. You might be lucky enough to find a wiring diagram or some sort of pinout diagram to work out which circuits you need. Or you might get lucky and see there is a little L and an R beside two of the pins. This will help you determine which color wiring you need to put on which pin. And just a quick disclaimer here before we continue. The instructions from here on out in the video are specific to the exact tape drive I have here in question. And the procedure that you may have to perform will differ depending on the brand or model of the tape unit you have. You may have to solder your wires directly to the circuits on the tape drive, or even on the head unit's main board itself. If you're having trouble tracking down which circuits you need, you can also plug the head unit back into your car and start prodding around with a voltmeter to test the voltages of the circuits you've found on the tape drive. Any circuits with voltages running through them are not the ones you need. And if you can find three in a row which do not have any voltage running through them, it's certainly a good place to start. In my case, I got lucky by Googling some of these codes. The first one here is ground, where I'll need to connect the black. The second one is white, which is the left audio channel. And the third one is red for the right audio channel. Okay, now that we have the board on the end here loosened, you can actually get a really good look at that ribbon cable with the seven circuits being transferred between the boards. So the three that we want are these first three here. So I'm actually going to cut this ribbon cable up to the third circuit. So now that I've cut the three circuits out of the clear ribbon cable here, I'm now going to cut down in between each of them so that I can sort of separate them off. So what we're going to do now is strip back some of this clear plastic so we can get access to the wire. If you do a little cut on each side of the wire, you can usually just pull the plastic straight off. And it's given us a nice little length of wire on each one to solder on the wires from our Bluetooth receiver. However, before we do that, we need to work out where the wiring from the Bluetooth receiver is going to come through the casing of this head unit and connect into these three wires. One thing to consider about that is the actual size of this Bluetooth receiver. In my Fairlane, there's a fair amount of space below the head unit. So what I'm gonna do is actually poke these wires up through this hole here. The location you choose for the wiring to enter the unit is particularly important because you gotta remember once the tape drive is back in place, if the wiring comes out directly underneath this thing, it might be quite difficult to fit it. So what I'm gonna do is just keep the wiring coming through there and pull this thing aside. And I'm also gonna strip off some of the wiring here. Now I am far from the world's best solderer, but I think even that turned out all right. So now we're just going to put the heat shrink down over these connections so that they don't short out on anything. The heat shrink I've used here is probably a little bit big for the wiring, but it's still on there pretty firmly, so it's not going to go anywhere. Now that we've got our wiring soldered on, I just need to put this board back to where it's meant to be sitting and bend these little mounting brackets back into place. This mod revolves around the head unit thinking that there's a tape being played in the drive. So in order to make that happen, you can actually get a proper tape, strip the insides out and then have it permanently loaded inside the drive. Or alternatively, and I think this is a better way, you can simply remove any springs from the drive unit itself, which will allow it to sit down in the loaded position without a tape fitted. So I'm just gonna use the tips of my scissors to pull that spring from its little seating and remove it. 
And then we need to do the same with this one here on the top. So after those two springs are removed, you should be able to push it down so that it's in the loaded position. This will trick the head unit into thinking there's a tape fitted and it'll attempt to play it. Now that that's done, we can fit it back into the head unit. With the module mounted, we can now work on powering it up. When it comes to powering this Bluetooth module, you've got two different options. The first is to join red to red. The red wire is a constant power source, which means it'll be running even when the vehicle is turned off. I am not personally comfortable with doing this because it may drain the battery if the vehicle is not driven for extended periods of time. So my preferred option is to join it to the yellow, which means it'll only receive power once you've turned the key to the accessories notch. So I'll be splicing this red wire onto yellow, and for the ground wire, you simply have to find the black wire in the harness and attach that one to there. And because I can't get heat shrink around these, I'm simply gonna wrap them in electrical tape. Once the power for the Bluetooth module has been connected, we can now put the head unit back together and install it into the vehicle. And that's the end result. Now the process may differ a little bit depending on which head unit you're working with, but the end result is going to be the same. You've got the Bluetooth module, which needs to be hardwired into your head unit's wiring harness, and you have your three signal wires, your white, red, and black, which need to be attached somewhere onto the tape module inside. It's really as simple as that, so let's go try it out. So, we're back in the Fairlane with our new Bluetooth-enabled factory head unit, and from the outside it looks as though nothing has changed, which is the real beauty of this mod, because I'm able to retain the existing 1990s facade, but with a little bit of modern technology thrown in. Let me show you how it works. So firstly, I'll just switch it on. So here we are on the radio mode. If we swap to tape mode, and the drive will start playing the imaginary tape, which is not in the drive. So, if we grab our phone and go to the Bluetooth settings, you'll see that there is a new device available called Sky International. The name of your Bluetooth module will differ depending on where you've purchased it from. So let's go ahead and try and connect to that. Pairing. Okay, so that noise we just heard was the Bluetooth module confirming that this phone has now been paired. So we can now try and play some music through it. Now for this example, I'm going to be using a royalty-free song track from SoundCloud because I don't want YouTube to hit me with a copyright infringement. So here we go. The great thing about this mod is that all of the settings on your head unit will continue to work as normal, such as loud, which ups the bass, or you can play around with the bass or treble settings independently. Now of course this Bluetooth receiver will basically play any audio out of your phone, so you can switch to an other app such as YouTube, and it'll work perfectly fine. So there you have it. Fully functioning Bluetooth in your car for under $25. Now I imagine there's going to be a few of you in the comments section which are going to have a rib at me about my soldering skills or ways I could have done it better. But in the end, I've had a system like this running in my car for more than two years and it has worked absolutely fine. So what did you think? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time.